Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rosberg for making this video possible. Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Gear2Wolf here bringing you another Minecraft Cold War vehicle tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be going ahead and building the Kawasaki P2J. The Kawasaki P2J, originally known as the, the P2V Kai, was a maritime patrol and anti-submarine warfare aircraft developed for the Jap Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force. A turboprop powered version of the radi radical engine P2 Neptune, the P2J was developed as an alternative to buying the larger and more expensive P3 Orion, which would eventually replace the P2Js in the 1980s. The Kawasaki built the P2J uh, and was the last version of the Neptune to be produced. Work on the P2J was uh, begun in 1961. The first P2J, converted from a P2V-7, performed its initial flight on 21st of July 1966, and the last of the further 82 produced P2Js were delivered in March 1979. The right radical engines on the Lockheed P2s were replaced with the 2,125 kilowatt or 2,850 horsepower uh, Iskawajima Harama T64 IHI-10 turboprop engines, using three bladed propellers instead of the four bladed units of the late model P2s. The, uh, the aircraft also had uh, some booster jet turbojets produced, which um, gave the P2Js a top speed of 650 kilometers per hour or 400 miles per hour. The P2J had a combination for up to 12 crewmen. The forward fuselage was extended 4 feet 3 inches, with the tail surfaces being enlarged and their shape modified. The AN slash APAS 80 search radar was fitted in a smaller radome. Updated avionics systems were installed, and these systems were much more compact than those used in the versions of the Neptune. The lighter avionics load permitted greater fuel capacity, and the P2J's main landing gear was fitted with two wheels each rather than one large wheel of the earlier models. So, overall, really cool aircraft. Um, I really do like it. It's basically a P2 Neptune. Um, if you're looking for a nice kind of Cold War maritime patrol aircraft, basically in that P3 Orion role. Uh, but this here being the Japanese version, um, it definitely kind of is its own standalone thing with the additions of the different um, um, turbojet engines on the wings and also the addition of uh, the different engines. You really have that difference there in the aircraft. Uh, for the most part, though, it is going to be very reminiscent of the P2 um, Neptune. Uh, but overall, really cool build and should be a very fun one to add into your uh, worlds if you're looking for some kind of cool Cold War um, Japanese aircraft. Before we go and jump into taking a look at this build, I do want to go and give a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel where you guys already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month. And in doing so, or if you have a request you're choosing, it really helps support the work I do on my channel and it's really greatly appreciated. So definitely feel free to to check that out links again always in the video descriptions with that though let's go ahead and move in here to take a look at the aircraft and kind of move from there to begin with we have it in its kind of standard color scheme here which was basically a kind of dark gray base a little bit of a white um, spine to the aircraft and that's really that um, it's pretty uh, a pretty interesting color scheme I actually really do like it I think it kind of highlights and complements itself pretty well uh, but yeah going ahead and getting started uh, we have the front up here of the aircraft which has the cockpit obviously for the um, pilots it does also have a kind of glass nose here on the front so um, interesting design there as well uh, we have the detail or we have the number of the aircraft so 64 right here on the side as we continue to work our way back we have obviously the white t uh, spine of the aircraft that work goes all the way back uh, we have the tail or the vertical stabilizer the horizontal stabilizer and a really long kind of pointed end that uh, comes off the back of the aircraft which is kind of unique uh, for its, its uh, definitely an interesting design there. Uh, we have the big radar here that's located underneath the bottom or the yeah the bottom of the fuselage there, and as well as additional little uh, you know bits and pieces and stuff like that that comes off the back there. So pretty cool stuff there. And uh, overall, a lot of really good detail in the aircraft. I'm overall really happy with the overall design of it. Um, I think it's a pretty awesome aircraft. It will be an awesome addition for your Cold War uh, builds. You can also modify this if you really want to into a uh, P, uh, P2, like the, the American version, and have a jet out of that one as well. So, overall, pretty cool stuff uh, for this aircraft overall, and will be a fun build to do. Without further ado, though, let's go ahead and move into the tutorial by beginning with our first layer. Alright guys, so moving into our first layer here, we'll be going ahead and starting off with layer number 
3. Now we'll start with layer 3 here because it gives us a better kind of basis for the aircraft to get started with and um, overall just kind of makes things a little bit easier for us um, going forward. Now one thing I do want to go ahead and mention is that if you are completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials, I like to do half on camera half off. What this means is we're going to be building the entire center line of the aircraft and then the right side and then it'll be up to you guys in between layers to copy what we do on the right side over to the left side. This aircraft is uh, symmetrical so whatever we do on one side will be done on the other so just make sure that uh, you are taking those into account when we go ahead and start building this uh, but once we get for the first few layers here it'll make a little bit more sense as what we're doing and will be pretty easy overall in addition to that if you do want to build the landed version which will be an option for this tutorial you will want to make sure that you build this the correct height off the ground we're going to be building this aircraft as if it's in flight and then going back and adding the landing gear on at the end as a modification to make sure that this is um, good to go for being a in flight or uh, landed version you do want to make sure that this is this layer here layer three is three blocks up from the ground level you can see we have three full blocks of space between the start here of this layer and basically the ground level very important you do that because obviously if this aircraft sits too high or too low then when we go to add a landing gear it's not going to sit properly so just make sure you take that into account and if you are building the in-flight version then don't worry about that just make sure you have enough uh, clearance in the block height limit Anyways, let's get started. First thing we want to do is we're going to place down a gray concrete block. This right here is going to be a row of gray concrete that in total is going to be 25 blocks long down the center of the aircraft. After we have that done, we're going to go ahead and place down two polished black stone top slabs coming off the gray concrete in the direction we want the front. So we're going to have it facing that way. So we're going to place down our two polished black stone top slabs that way. Going toward the back here, we then want to go ahead and go above this section here. And we're going to go ahead and place down two pistons on the bottom here like so. So they're going to sit there for right now. If you do not have access, to, if you're not on Java Edition, I would recommend just going ahead and using some gray concrete full blocks in this place instead. We will be using a debug stick to go ahead and change the properties of those pistons a little bit later. So again, if you are on uh, Java or Java, then go ahead and do the pistons. If you're on Bedrock or Pocket Edition, I would recommend just doing th three more gray concrete blocks. Either way, we're going to then place down two polished blackstone top slabs back, a gray concrete block, a polished blackstone upside down stair, and a dark oak trap door. We're going to go then skip a space of two and then place down a polished blackstone wall here on the end. We can then delete those two blocks and we have our center line here of the aircraft built. From this point, going to the sides, we're going to place down a uh, polished blackstone top slab, followed by a polished blackstone upside down stair, and then a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight gray concrete blocks back. A red concrete block and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 gray concrete blocks back like that. Followed by two polished black stone ups down stairs and then 1, 2, 3 polished black stone top slabs as well as 1, 2, 3 dark oak trap doors. At this point here uh, we can go ahead and then use our give command. So if you're on Java we'll type in slash give at p and we'll go ahead and type in debug and it should automatically fill in. We can press tab and it will fill in our command here and it will give us a debug stick. Now we'll take this debug stick and we'll go ahead and select the pistons. So we have selected extended false. We'll set this to true and it will go ahead and create this effect here like this. So you kind of get a better sloping look for the back there uh, for that center line. Again, something that isn't completely necessary, but I think it adds a nice little bit of extra sloping and creates a nicer overall feel for the aircraft. That right there is that right there, and again, if you are on Pocket Edition or Bedrock, I'd recommend just using gray concrete blocks instead. And after that's all done, going back up to the front here, we're going to go to our second gray concrete block from the front. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven um, gray stained glass paints, followed by a red stained glass paint. And then we're going to then place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven uh, gray stained glass paints back after that. Now after we have that all finished, we then want to go ahead and go to our, we're going to count from our last gray stained glass pane. We're going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and to our 7th gray stained glass pane from the front. We're going to place it on a block there to the side. Same thing on both sides. Now this right here is going to, we're going to count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 uh, blocks out to the side. I'm going to go and double check my count and it is 10. So again over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then at this point, we're going to then place down a dark liquid trap door like so. Two dark or polished blackstone top subs, sorry, three polished blackstone top subs coming off of it. And we're going to then place down an iron trap door on the end here like so. And that will be the basis for our start for our uh, kind of booster engines that we'll have on the sides there. After we have that complete, we can go and then delete the yellow concrete there like so. 
or uh, basically delete our blocks that we used to build up to the side. And once we have that all done right there, that will basically conclude layer three for the build. Taking a look at it from above, this is what we should have for the top down view with this layer complete. And once you have that done, obviously you're gonna take what you've done on the right side, copy it over to the left side and you'll be pretty much good to go. Anyways so though, with that, that's gonna do it for this layer. Let's go ahead and move down to layers one and two. Alright guys, moving into layers 1 and 2, layers 1 and 2 are super simple to do. All we're going to do is go ahead and go to basically our red concrete here and our red stained glass panes. We're going to use that to align ourselves. We're going to then go down to the gray concrete block that was in between those red concrete blocks. And we're going to place another red concrete block that drops down from it, followed by another brick top slab on the bottom, or sorry, a red nether brick top slab on the bottom of that block there. We then want to place down two black concrete blocks going forward from this red concrete block, as well as a nether brick slab on the... Uh, bottom of the black concrete block that's touching the red concrete one. We're going to go then place down two gray concrete blocks going toward the rear, followed by a polished black stone upside down stair. Underneath this first gray concrete block, we're going to place down a polished black stone top slab and then a dark oak wood trap door on the bottom of the second gray concrete block. To the sides here, we're going to place down a narrow brick wall coming off the side of this black concrete block, followed by a black concrete block, a red concrete block, and then a gray concrete block. And we're just going to go ahead and then place down a polished black stone wall in this corner space, like so. And with that all done, that right there is going to basically complete layers 1 and 2. Uh, as I mentioned, super simple to do. Uh, are pretty much our easiest layers for the build for sure. Uh, but yeah, that right there will basically conclude layers 1 and 2. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving up to layer number 4. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer number 4. For layer 4 to get started with, you're going to place down a black stained glass, or two black stained glass full blocks on top of these two dark oak wood or I'm sorry, not dark oak, polished blackstone top slabs here in the front, followed by one more that sticks past you have a row of three, and it should stick past that top slab by one like that. We then want to place down an air brick top slab, coming off the end there, like so. With that done, that's going to do our for our front, and then going to our back of our center line, we're going to go ahead and place down a gray concrete block on top of this dark oak wood trap door, then one, two, three dark, or sorry, gray concrete blocks back, so in total you have a row of four there. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of three of pistons, so again, the same way we did before, we're just going to go ahead and place down our pistons upside down like this on the bottom there and we're going to go ahead and leave them be again if you're on a different version of uh, minecraft than java then go ahead and just use gray concrete uh full blocks we're going to go then place down a polished blackstone slab uh, or sorry top slab followed by an upside down polished blackstone stair on the back of that stair a gray concrete block a polished blackstone top slab a dark oak wood trap door we're going to go then skip a space place down a polished blackstone top slab and a dark oak wood trap door so let's look at that there for your center line like that and up there on the front we have our class full blocks and all that anyways at that point we're going to go now move out to the sides we're going to place down a uh, black stained glass pane here followed by two uh, polished black stone walls back and then we're going to place down one two three four five six seven eight nine ten gray concrete blocks back we're going to follow this up with a red concrete block and then again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one uh, gray concrete blocks so I'm going to go and double check my count here and make sure we're good and it is going to be 21 gray concrete blocks in total after that red concrete we then want to place down a row of four of polished blackstone upside down stairs so one two three four and then a row of one two three top slabs of polished blackstone and then two dark oak trap doors on the end here if you went ahead and did this pistons on the back here using our debug stick we're going to go ahead and do the same thing we did for the previous layer um, and we're going to go ahead and just have extended to true like that on the bottom there uh, with that done, going back up to the front and out to the sides here, we're going to place down a um, gray stained glass pane coming off this second uh, gray concrete block. And we're going to go ahead and place down two more uh, stained glass panes behind that going back. We then want to place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six polished black stone walls and then a red nether brick wall, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, and thirteen polished black stone walls back. And then a row of one, two, three, four, and five gray stained glass panes back. At uh, this point here, we want to go ahead and then start working our way out to the sides, which will be getting into our engines. For our first section here, we're going to go after our red, uh, our red nether brick wall. We're going to count back one, two, and our third polished black stone wall going back. We're going to count to the side one, two, three, and four from it. And then same thing here, one, two, three, and four. Now at this point, we want to go and then place down a polished black stone top slab on the end here, like so. We're gonna go then take our gray concrete, go back one, two, three, and four gray concrete blocks. And on the sides here of the first three gray concrete blocks, we're just gonna go ahead and place down our gray stained glass panes. We're gonna go then place down two polished blackstone top slabs back. And then after that, we wanna go and just very simply place down a dark oak trap door there on the end. 
We can then delete these red concrete blocks as we won't be needing these anymore or basically we won't be needing those blocks connecting there and we have our um, engines like that or the start there of the bottom of our engines. At this point we'll be going ahead and moving into what will be our um, booster jets on the sides of the vehicle. So for our booster jets here we're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block on top of this um, polished black stone top slab. We then want to place down a polished black stone wall to both sides and then we're going to go ahead and grab ourselves a black stained glass pane and we're going to place down a black stained glass pane going forward from those uh, walls like so. We're going to go and then place down two gray concrete blocks down the center here followed by again uh, two polished black stone walls on the sides. And after we have that done we're going to go and then grab our polished anisite. We're going to place down two polished anisite blocks down the center here followed by a light gray stained glass pane on both sides of the first one. On the very back here we're going to place down an item frame. In that item frame we want to place down a black concrete block. Like so, and then just to go ahead and add a little bit of detail, if you're on Java, we can go and place down a birchwood sign on the side of the polished blackstone block as well. Um, if you, or sorry, the polished andesite block. If you are on uh, Bedrock or Pocket Edition, you're not able to place down an item frame inside the same block space. Um, so just go ahead and place down the item frame and disregard the um, sign there. But the sign's a nice little extra detail portion for those of us on Java that have that ability to do that feature. Anyways, though, that right there is going to conclude what we have there for layer 4. Taking a look at it from above, this is what we should have from the top-down view. And with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number 5. Alright, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer 5. For layer 5 to get started with here, we're going to place down a black stained glass block on top of this narrow brick top slab, followed by one and two black stained glass full blocks going back from that. One thing you can also do is if you do not want to do an interior for the build, we can go and just close this off with some black concrete right here. So, two up like that and also a black stained glass block right there. Um, since we're not going to be doing it here for the build I'm just going to go ahead and close this off with black concrete but it just kind of helps avoid having a giant void when you're looking into the um, aircraft especially if you don't have shaders or anything like that the, the glass is pretty easy to see through so I don't want to have that big void there um, so I just close it off with black concrete. So again up to you guys um, but kind of depends on what you want to do there. Anyways at this point here we're going to go ahead and also place down a polished black stone button come off the side here of this black stained glass block there in the front to go ahead and complete the center line for the front nose. After this, we're going to go and then go to the back of the aircraft. We're going to start off by going ahead and placing down a gray concrete block on top of this dark oak wood trap door on the very tail here. We're going to go then place down one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven gray concrete blocks forward. So you have a total of eight there. We're going to go then place down a polished black stone upside down stair, coming off this gray concrete block on the end, and then the iron trap door coming off of that stair like so. We're going to go and basically leave that as is for right now, and we'll come back to that a little bit later. Going back up to the front, we're going to place down a black stained glass pane coming off the side here of this block, followed by a narrow brick wall, a polished black stone wall, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 gray concrete blocks back, followed by a red concrete block, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 gray concrete blocks back. In this section here, we're going to go and then place down a red narrow brick upside down stair. A red concrete block and then another red narrow brick upside down stair. The inside section here we're just going to fill with gray concrete. We're just going to place down one, two, and three gray concrete blocks there in the center to fill that space in and you avoid those little gaps there um, where then we have the start of the Japanese red um, kind of dot. We're going to go then place down one, two, and three uh, gray concrete blocks back and then one, two, three, four, five polished blackstone walls and then two gray stained glass panes back like that afterward. Then going back up to the front and out to the sides, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down a uh, dragon head, which is going to be coming off the side here like this. So we're going to place down a block that's going to be coming off this wall here. And then on top of that block, we're just going to place down a dragon's head. So the dragon head sits coming off this uh, gray concrete block. And then we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull directly after it on the side of the second block. We're going to go then place down one, two, three light gray stained glass panes, and then one, two, three, four, five, six polished black stone walls. Followed by a red nether brick wall, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 uh, polished black stone walls. I'm going to go and double check my count here. It is going to be 17 uh, walls back, followed by 1, 2, 3, and 4 light gray stingless panes, half that row of 17 of walls. Once we have uh, that all complete, also on the front here, we do want to go ahead and add some banners. So uh, the first banner here really is basically your numbers. So uh, these numbers here can be whatever you guys want them to be. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down the numbers here on these first two gray stained glass panes. So we have 64 here and just to kind of reference that on our aircraft tail number here, you can see we have 9164. 
the last two digits here are going to be the aircraft number located up on the front there. So I would recommend um, basically going about that way to uh, put the numbers on the side here, kind of decide what you want the tail number to be. Uh, but we have 6-4 right here. I'm not going to go into depth and in how to make these numbered banners because I feel like they're pretty self-explanatory and not really completely needed. Um, if you want to, there's plenty of tutorials out there, but all we did was use a gray banner and some white, uh, and white lettering to go ahead and make those numbers. So, um, again, I would recommend putting them on there. It adds a nice little bit of extra detail, and especially if you have a couple of these in one area, you could have different numbers to kind of vary them up a little bit and make them each a little bit more unique. Um, but yeah, again, I'm not going to show the making of these banners um, exactly, but uh, there are plenty of tutorials out there that do cover numbered banners very easily. Uh, but yeah, that right there is going to be it for that banner. I will show you guys, though, how to make this banner here on the side. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the materials, and I'll see you guys here shortly to make it. Alright guys, so to make this banner, it's super simple to make. We're just going to need a black banner, or obviously our loom, and two gray dye. We're going to go into our loom, place down our black banner, and our gray dye. We're going to go and split the banner in half by having the gray on the bottom here like so, and then we're going to place this banner back into our loom, and we're going to go then select the gray border that goes around it like so. And basically it creates a banner that looks just like this. This banner here is going to go ahead and go on the side of these polished black stone walls on both sides of the front here, like that, for a little bit of an, another window that's uh, on the side of the aircraft. So pretty simple there, very easy banner to make. Now at this point, we're going to be going ahead and continuing to work our way back, and we will be going ahead and touching our up on our engine here a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just grab some of the necessary materials we'll need for this. Um, like so. And we should be pretty much good to go for this. Now, to go ahead and make this engine, we're going to start off by going ahead and placing down a gray concrete block on top of this top slab, followed by one gray concrete block forward. We then want to place down a piston that comes down from this block, down at an angle like so. And we're going to then take our debug stick, and we're going to go ahead and set it to extended is true but we're not going to go and do that just quite yet um we will place down a dark oak wood sign here on both sides like so and then an item frame on the front here with a black stained glass uh pane in the item frame like so so just like that and then we can go and then change our piston to extended to true with our debug stick we're gonna go and then place down uh two gray stained glass panes on the side of these two gray concrete blocks and then going back, we're going to go ahead and then place down an additional three gray concrete blocks with three polished black stone walls on the sides of those. And then after we have that done, we're going to go ahead and then place down a uh, another row of two of gray concrete, followed by two gray stained glass paint to both sides. And we then want to go ahead and place down one, two, and three gray concrete blocks going back. We're going to go ahead and place down an item frame here on the back. And in the item frame, we're going to place down a black concrete block, as well as a dark oak sign, like so. And with that all done right there, that is going to pretty much uh, wrap up our inner engine there. And going ahead and moving to our uh, turbojet engines here on the sides, we're going to place down a dark oak wood trapdoor over this space, like so. Followed by one, two, and three. And four polished black stone walls back. And once we have that all done there, that is going to basically complete um, what we have there for layer five. So pretty simple stuff, nothing too complex. And uh, we have... a. Uh, you know more of this aircraft done anyways with that out of the way though that is going to finish that off let's go ahead and move on to our next layer layer number six all right guys moving into our next layer we'll be moving into layer number six for layer six to get started with here we're going to place down an brick slab on top of this black stained glass block right there the second one we're going to then place down a polished black stone stair and then one two three and four gray concrete blocks back followed by one two three four and five black concrete blocks which will be basically um, to close off the bottom there of our canopy. If you do want to have uh, your cockpit exposed or whatever and you want to do an interior, then you can go and leave that space open. But for us, we're going to be closing this off with black concrete as we will not be doing an interior. Anyways, that right there is it for our front line. Let's go ahead and move to our back. We're going to start off with placing down a, court, a smooth quartz full block on top of this um, iron trap door, followed by a second smooth quartz full block, and then two smooth quartz top subs going back for the tail there. We're going to go then go forward from the smooth quartz block, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, gray concrete blocks like that. Going up to the front here again, we want to go ahead and start off by going ahead and placing down a gray carpet next to this stair, a polished black stone slab, and a polished black stone stair, followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, gray concrete blocks, a red concrete block, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22 red con or, sorry, gray concrete blocks back. I'm going to double check my count here and it's going to be 22 blocks. 
We're gonna go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three red concrete, then one, two, three, four gray concrete, and then one, two, three, four, five, six polished black stone walls, two gray uh, stained glass panes, and then two white stained glass panes, like that, to go ahead and finish off the back there. Once we have uh, that done, go ahead and go into the sides. We're gonna go ahead and start off by placing down a light gray, or sorry, a dark gray, or just a normal gray stained glass pane come out the side here, this third gray concrete block back, followed by a second glass pane, and we're gonna then place down one, two, three, four, five polished black stone walls, followed by a red nether brick wall, and then one, two, three, four, and five polished black stone walls. At this point here, we're gonna place down a polished black stone upside down stair, followed by one, two gray concrete blocks, and then we're gonna place down one, two, and three polished black stone upside down stairs again, followed by one, two, three, four, five, six polished black stone walls, and then one, two, three, and four gray stained glass panes back. Once we have that all done, moving into our uh, wings here, we're going to place down a row of four of polished black stone, or sorry, actually a row of three, one, two, three of polished black stone top slabs. Behind those, we're going to place down each a row of two of gray concrete, so we have three rows of two, and we then want to place down one, two top slabs, one, two, one, two, and you probably guessed it, dark oak with trapdoors like that across those three blocks. Now we're going to then place down a polished black stone upside down stair in this spot here. And after that upside down stair, we're going to then place down one and two gray concrete blocks, like so, followed by a row of two of polished black stone top slabs and a dark oak trap door there on the ends. For this section here, on the back of this polished black stone stair, we're going to place down a gray concrete block, followed by one, two, and three back, so you have a total of four. We're going to go ahead and place down a polished black stone stair on the back here like so, and then a polished black stone slab coming off the front there of that stair. We then want to go ahead and work our way toward the front for our engine here. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four, and five gray concrete blocks like that going forward. We're going to go ahead and take our polished black stone walls on this side here. We're going to place down two walls and then two gray stained glass panes. Actually, sorry, my bad. It's going to be three walls and then two gray stained glass panes. And same thing over here, two gray stained glass panes, one, two, three polished black stone walls. And then right here we have our polished black stone upside down stair, our two gray concrete blocks, then a polished black stone top slab, and then two dark oaker trap doors back from that. Now continuing on with our engine here, we're gonna place down a black concrete block here, followed by a uh, nether brick wall coming off of it, like so. And we then wanna go ahead and place down a wither skeleton skull, which will be coming off this wall like this going forward. Now at this point here, we can go ahead and also do the props for the aircraft, since we do have the part where they do connect. So for our props here, pretty simple, we're going to go to the side of the black concrete block, we're going to place down one, two, three, and four skeleton skulls to the side, then going up at an angle from the opposite side, we're going to go up, uh, basically three andesite walls going up in a staircase type pattern like so. And for our walls going down, we're going to place down a wall right here. We'll go ahead and use our debug stick, if you have... Uh, basically have the ability to do it and we will prevent the wall from connecting up to the piston there. In addition, you will need to fix this piston if you did uh, place the piston there. Um, so we're going to have the wall that comes down like so. If you're on another version and you do have a gray concrete block right here instead, uh, your wall will connect to it and it will dis to destroy the item frame. So just make sure you take that into account. Uh, we can use a, something else, uh, maybe dispensers or something like that to avoid this wall connecting, but this wall will connect unfortunately. Um, for that front section there unless you use the debug stick to modify it. After this though we're going to place down a uh, skeleton skull that's going to be coming off the side of a block so we're going to place down a block here to the side, skeleton skull like that. We're going to go and then drop down from the skeleton skull here, place down a block and a skeleton skull on the side of that block and then an inside wall that comes down from that skeleton skull. We can then delete those two blocks like so and we have basically our props built and the same thing is going to be done over there on the air side and that will basically create our two propellers there for our aircraft. At this point though, continuing on, we're going to then place down a polished black stone top side here, come off this one, and then two gray concrete blocks back, followed by a polished black stone top slab, and then two dark oak with trap doors. Our next row here is going to be a row of four of top slabs, so one, two, three, four, and then it's going to be one uh, dark oak with trap door on the end there. We're going to then place down a second row of four, so one, two, three, four, and a narrow dark oak with trap door there on the end. Our next row here is going to be a dark oak trap door here in the front, two polished black stone top slabs, a dark oak trap door, and um, that actually is going to be two dark oak trap doors, so just like that. Next row here is going to be a gray stained glass pane that will be on top of this first wall here, 
And then behind that wall, where you or behind that glass pane, we're place down three polished blackstone walls, followed by a dark hookah trap door coming off the end there. Continuing out to the side, we're going to go to these two polished blackstone uh, walls. We're going to place down two top slabs like so, a dark hookah trap door coming off both sides, and we're going to then place down an additional dark hookah trap door coming off the sides there like so. In this center space here, uh, between those dark oakwood trap doors, we're going to go ahead and grab dark oakwood fence gates. We're going to place down one, two fence gates, then one, two, and one, two, coming off the side there's like so. We're going to go ahead and take the back ones, open them up toward the front, and the front ones we're going to open up toward the back. And this right here will basically be your racks here, which could, um, or I should say your hard points, which could carry missiles. So um, that is basically what we have there um, on those wings. And with that all complete, that is going to pretty much wrap up this layer. A uh, few things, or actually really only one thing really to mention, is we do have these little letters here on the back which were kind of cool. And basically all we did with this is we went ahead and took a gray banner, we did the white brick pattern, and we just kind of threw in some different shapes of gray around it um, to kind of go ahead and try to create some sort of, um, you know, Japanese type writing. Uh, this is very similar to what we did for the Chinese sword dragon. Um, so it's kind of just something you'll have to play with. Um, I honestly do not know how to do this. Uh, this was done by my buddy uh, Derek who did a really good job with making these. So we just have these on the side there and they just kind of represent some Japanese writing on the side of the aircraft. Not completely something that's necessary but it just kind of adds a little bit to it and that makes it look kind of cool. So um, just throwing it out there if you do want to uh, add that that's there for you guys. And basically the very simply to place them uh, we just started off with basically we have this wall. And we go to that gray concrete block. And over here we go from the gray concrete block to that third wall. So um, that's just right there where they go. Um, just wanted to kind of throw that out there and mention that um, as it's something that you can add. But again, it's not extremely necessary. Anyways, though, with that, let's move on to our next layer, layer number seven. All right, guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer seven. For layer seven to get started with here, we're going to begin with by placing down an air brick slab, which will be on top of this second gray concrete block here. We're going to place down an air brick slab, or sorry, an air brick stair. After that, a dark black concrete block. And then a row of one, two, three, four, and five black stained glass full blocks. We then want to place down a row of smooth quartz, which in total is going to be 23 blocks, followed by a black concrete block, and then one, two, three, four, five, and six smooth quartz, another black concrete block, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen uh, quartz full blocks back. I'm going to go and double check our count here. It will be fifteen. And then a smooth quartz top slab there on the very end. After that's done, that's going to do our center line and we'll start moving our way out to the sides. We're going to place down a black carpet on top of this gray concrete block there, a narrow brick stair, a narrow brick corner stair, and then one, two, three, and four black stained glass blocks back. We then want to place down two smooth quartz blocks, a red concrete block, a smooth quartz block, a black concrete block, and then uh, we're going to take our smooth quartz here and again go back one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten until we're placed on a narrow black stained glass or a narrow black concrete block, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven smooth quartz blocks, a black stained glass block, a smooth quartz block, a narrow brick, red narrow brick stair, a con red concrete block, and then a red narrow brick stair like so, two smooth quartz blocks, and then a black concrete block like so. Or actually, sorry, it's going to be a black stained glass block like that. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Direct walls back. And one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, white stained glass panes back from that. After that's all done, uh, that right there will basically do it for our fuselage. And actually, not quite yet. <laughs> we do have a little bit more to do. Get a little ahead of myself there. Uh, but we want to go and then place down a black stained glass pane come off the side of this first black stained glass block up here. A narrow brick wall after that and then two black stained glass full blocks going back. We're going to go and then place down two white stained glass panes followed by a red stained glass pane, a white stained glass pane, and then we're going to go and grab a black stained glass pane again and place down one here followed by one, two, and three um, white stained glass panes like that. We're going to go and then place down a row of one, two, three, four smooth quartz stairs. And then one, two, three white stained glass panes, as well as a black stained glass pane. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven white stained glass panes going back like so. And with that all done right there, that is now going to complete our fuselage. Moving out to the sides here, we're going to go and grab some dark oak wood trap doors, some polished black stone slabs, daylight detectors, and dark oak wood trap doors, um, and some wither skeleton skulls, as well as some pistons here. And we're going to go and basically start working on the wings. So for the wings here, 
to get started, uh, we want to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three dark oak trap doors, and behind this we're going to place down two rows of three of uh, polished blackstone slabs, as well as one, two, three daylight detectors, turn those to night mode, two dark oak trap doors, a daylight detector, again turn to night mode, and then a row of three of dark oak trap doors there on the back. Next row here is going to be a polish, two polished black, polish blackstone slabs there, two daylight detectors back, turn to night mode, and a dark oak trap door after that. Next row here is going to be a daylight detector on top of this gray concrete block, turn that to night mode, as well as two polished blackstone slabs back, and then one, two, three, four, and five um, pistons back. We're going to go ahead and turn these pistons to, uh, basically, or extend them to true so that they sit like this. And then after that, we're going to place down two polished blackstone slabs and then a trapdoor here. Next row to the side is going to be two polished blackstone slabs here, a dark oak trapdoor like that on the front there, and then taking our daylight detectors, we're going to place down two daylight detectors, turn those to night mode, and a dark oak trapdoor on the end there. At this point now, we can go ahead and then do that to our pistons, so we shouldn't have any more problems um, with those. Uh, we might, though, actually place these skulls here, so we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, and three uh, Blizzard Skeleton Skulls. And on the other side here, uh, this trap door is actually going to be replaced with a Daylight Detector. We're going to turn that to Night Mode, and again place down two Blizzard Skeleton Skulls going forward from that. Now, we can go ahead and adjust our pistons there using our debug stick. Um, to go ahead and get them to sit a little bit f more flatter. With that, uh, we want to go ahead and then take our um, daylight detectors. We're going to go out one, two, three more out to the side here. We're going to go ahead and turn these all to the night mode. We're going to take our polished black stone slabs. We're going to go back one, two, one, two, one, two. And we then want to go ahead and take our daylight detectors and go back one, two, turn these to night mode, and then a dark oak trap door. And then right here, just one, two, one, two, daylight detectors turn to night mode like that out to the side there. Um, and we, once we get to this point, we're going to go then place down a row of three of slabs here and two daylight detectors like this going back and we're going to turn those to night mode as well. Uh, we then want to place down a row of four of polished blackstone slabs, so one, two, three, and four. And then our daylight detector here turned to night mode. Uh, at this point, we're going to go then place down a polished blackstone slab on the front here, followed by a gray concrete block after that, so we'll just go and grab one from here and place down a gray concrete block as well as a polished blackstone slab after that. A second polished blackstone slab and an air daylight detector turned to night mode. We then want to place down a polished blackstone stair, so we'll grab one. And we're going to place down a row of one, two, and three polished blackstone stairs at the side as well as three uh, gray concrete blocks behind those stairs. We're going to go ahead and place down two stairs here and then a gray concrete block right there. And then at that point, we're going to go ahead and go from our first stair, we're going to go back three slabs, or sorry, two slabs, so one, two. Our next stair, we're going to go ahead and go back one slab. And then in this section here, we're going to then place down a polished blackstone stair, like so. Continuing on, we're going to place down two gray concrete blocks that are going to be coming off that stair there in the front. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves some red concrete and some red nether brick top slabs or just slabs in general. Uh, we're going to place down two red concrete blocks, a red air brick top slab there, and then a red concrete block here, followed by two polished blackstone top slabs there on the back. We're going to go then place down three rows of four of top slabs of polished blackstone, so one, two, and three. Continuing on, we're going to then place down a row of three, so one, two, three, then a row of one, two, and then a dark oak trap door. And after that, we're going to then place down a row of three of dark oak trap doors. So we have one, two, three. And after that last row there, we're going to then place down a row of two. So one, two, like that on the end there. Now, once we have that done, we want to go and then skip a space of two. So one, two, out to the side from this first trap door. One, two. We're going to place down a polished blackstone top slab, like so, followed by a second one back, and then a dark oak trap door. And then going forward, we're going to place down one, two, and three top slabs, like so. We then can delete these uh, red concrete blocks, or these uh, blocks we used to skip that space out to the side there. And once we have that all done right there, that is going to basically conclude what we have there for layer number seven. Taking a look at it from above, this we should have for the top down view. With that though, that will conclude layer seven, and we'll be moving on to our next layer, layer number eight.
Before we go ahead and move on to our next uh, layer number eight, I do want to go ahead and add one thing on layer seven. For some reason, when I copied this over, uh, one portion or basically one block was not transferred over. And that right here is going to be this polished anisite top side that's going to come off this um, quartz top side. So it's just going to be like this coming off the back there. And once you have that added on to the rear, we'll be, go we'll be good to go ahead and now move on to our next layer, layer eight. Alright guys, moving into our next layer, we have layer 8. For layer 8, to get started with, you're going to place a polished blackstone slab, which will be on top of this uh, block right here. And we're going to then go back from it, placing down a gray concrete block, followed by three uh, black stained glass blocks. We're going to go ahead and place down two smooth quartz blocks, a red concrete block, two smooth quartz blocks, a black stained glass block. And we then want to go ahead and uh, place down a row of 19 smooth quartz blocks back from that black stained glass block. We're going to place down a black concrete block here, followed by another row of smooth quartz, which is going to be in total a row of 16 smooth quartz blocks, followed by our three pistons here, and then two polished, uh, sorry, two quartz uh, slabs, and then a daylight detector on the back here, which will turn to night mode. These pistons here on the sides of those, we're going to go ahead and take our birchwood signs, and we're just going to place down birchwood signs here on the side of the pistons. And again, we can go ahead and use our command here to give us the debug stick, like so. And we'll go ahead and modify these to sit like so there on the back. After that's all done, going back up to the front, we're going to place down an air brick stair, come off this gray concrete block, as well as one, two, three uh, black stained glass blocks back, two smooth quartz blocks back, a red concrete, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen uh, quartz blocks back. I'm going to double check our count here, and it's going to be eighteen. Followed by a row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 of our diorite walls, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 uh, white stained glass panes. On our second to last uh, white stained glass pane, we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, and 4 iron trap doors. Uh, we're going to go then go forward from this, and we're going to go then place down a row of 6, or actually, sorry, row 7. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Over here, same thing. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And 1, 2, 3, 4. Like that, going forward from it. Once we have uh, that all done there, uh, we want to go then grab ourselves some gray carpets and some red carpet, as well as some dark oak trap doors, some daylight detectors, and again, your polished blackstone slabs here, and all that stuff. And we're going to start working our way out to the sides here for our wings. To get started with, uh, we want to go ahead and begin with by taking our dark oak with trap doors. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three dark oak with trap doors, like so. That right there is going to be followed up with a row of four of daylight detectors. So one, two, three, and four, like so. And we're going to turn these to night mode. We're going to go then place down a row of three of polished blackstone slabs. So like that out to the side there. After we have that done, uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four dark oak trap doors, then one, two, three, four, and five uh, polished or daylight detectors like that out to the side there. And then our next row here is going to be just going to this section here one, two, th three, four, five, six, and seven dark oak trap doors like that out to the side there. We then want to take our red carpet, we're going to place down red carpet on top of the red concrete and red narrow brick stair there and then we're going to take our gray carpet and place it down on top of the polished blackstone top slabs and these gray concrete full blocks like that just to kind of help keep it a little bit more consistent of a gray color and um, all that stuff so just like that now once we get to this point we're going to be going ahead and working on the sides here um, this slab right here is actually going to be replaced with a stair so we're going to place down a stair there instead and then grab ourselves our gray concrete we're going to place down a gray concrete block directly behind that stair now we then want to go ahead and go back from this with our pistons. So again, using the same technique, we're going to go and grab our pistons here and place down two pistons right there for the time being. Um, after those pistons, we're going to then place down a polished blackstone stair like this and then one coming off the back of it like so. And we then want to go and take dark oak with trap doors or actually rather signs and place down signs here on the sides of those stairs. So one, two and one, two over here as well. And then grabbing a wither skeleton skull, we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull coming off this stair going back. Once we have that done, we want to go ahead and also take our wither skeleton skulls and we're going to place down two on the sides of these um, pistons. And at this point in time, we can go ahead and then change the pistons to that lowered state. Uh, we then want to go ahead and place down a additional two gray concrete blocks going forward. So one, two, 
uh, like so. And we're going to go then place down a row of two of gray stained glass paints. So on the outside here, it will actually be a row of one, two, three. And on the inside here, one, two. Now this right here will change depending on what side you work on, uh, this forward section. Uh, for the right side here, we do have it kind of transparent. So if we do want to go ahead and grab ourselves some black stained glass and Arabic slabs. This section here, we're going to go ahead and actually replace this top slab here with a narrow brick top slab and then a black stained glass uh, full block and then a narrow brick slab like that come off that full block. Uh, we can go and then take our wither skeleton skulls and place them down on both sides of this black stained glass block. This is going to be on the right side and the right side only. If you build, when you go to build the left side, you're going to be going ahead and just using a gray concrete block, a polished black stone top slab and a slab coming off of like that and the wither skeleton skull is exactly the same. So just make sure you uh, pay attention to those two differences there as those um, the right side um, little extension here is going to be bigger than or a little bit different than the other one. Uh, one thing we can also do is we can go ahead and go from uh, top of here of this second stair we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull like this. And same thing over here like so to go ahead and create that. And after we have uh, that all done there, that right there is going to basically wrap up this layer. One quick thing also I want to do is we're going to place down two black stained glass panes on top of those two black stained glass full blocks there uh, on the fuselage. But anyways, with that all complete, that right there is going to wrap up what we have here for the slayer. Uh, one thing also is on these smooth quartz blocks, we're going to count back one, two, three, four, five, and six. And our seventh smooth quartz block back, we're going to place down a dark polished black stone button on the side of it, skip a space, and an air polished black stone button like so. So, just like that on that section there, and that now will go ahead and conclude everything we have there for layer 8. And uh, with that, we'll be going ahead and moving into our next layer, layer number 9. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our next layer, we have layer number 9. For layer 9 to get started with here, we want to go ahead and begin with by going ahead and place down an air brick slab on top of this uh, black stained glass block here. We're going to go ahead and place down an air brick slab that goes back from that, and then a daylight detector turn to night mode. We then want to place down an acacia wood button. We're going to go ahead and skip one, two, three, and four spaces. And on top of this black stained glass block here, we're going to place down a daylight detector and turn that to night mode. We're going to go ahead and skip one, two, three spaces. We're going to go ahead and place down a white stained glass pane, then a diorite wall. We're going to go ahead and then skip one, two, three, four, and five spaces. We're going to go ahead and place down a barrier block. And on both sides of the barrier block, we're going to place down a stone button. So like so. And we then want to place down a direct wall on top of, or basically skip a space and then place down a direct wall. At this point here, we're going to take, um, we're going to go back up to the sub front here in the sides. We're going to place down two dark oak trap doors to the sides here, as well as a lever. We're going to place down two barrier blocks, which are going to have stone buns on top of those barrier blocks like so. And then take our polished black stone. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 polished black stone buttons back and then one two three and four and then we have the one here in the middle there like that for um for that then on top of this black concrete block back here on the fuselage we're gonna place down an item frame and a iron bar in the item frame like so we then want to go ahead and go to our second from last quartz block or second before we have this um we have this uh uh piston and we're gonna place down a gray concrete block here followed by a polished black stone button on the side. We're going to go forward, go forward another gray concrete block, again polished black stone button on both sides. And then after that we're going to then place down one, two, three, four, and five gray concrete blocks forward, as well as two black concrete full blocks like that after that. We then want to go ahead and take our daylight detectors. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three, four, five daylight detectors and turn these all to the night mode. And we want to go ahead and then place down a row of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight polished black stone slabs as well as an arrow of one two three four five six seven eight and then a row of one two three four five daylight detectors again turn these to night mode once we have that done uh we want to go and then place down a two blocks here and we'll place down wither skeleton schools here on top of those blocks and we'll turn these at slight angles like so to go ahead and create that right there after we have uh that done uh that right there will basically wrap up our tail and that will complete, uh, I believe, actually everything we have here for uh, layer number nine. Uh, just trying to double check here, make sure we're not missing anything, and everything does appear to be good to go. So that right there is going to conclude layer nine. 
And at this point in time, we're going to go ahead and now move into basically our final layers, which will basically consist of pretty much putting the whole vertical stabilizer onto the aircraft. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, grab some of the stuff we'll need and basically jump into uh, building the uh, whole tail section. Alright guys, moving into our final layers here, we have layers 10 through 21. For these layers to go ahead and get started with, we're going to be going ahead and moving to our tail section here. We're going to go ahead and place down another brick wall right here, followed by a black concrete block. And then we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and uh, 6 great concrete blocks back, and then a polished black stone wall there on the end. Uh, there will also be a um, polished black stone button, which will be up here on this second from last great concrete block. Going ahead and continuing up, we're going to place down another black stained glass pane here, followed by a black stained glass full block. And then we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6 gray concrete blocks back, and another gray stained glass pane on the back there. Again, same thing, a polished black stone button on top of this block, around the sides of this block here, like that. Next row up, we're going to place down a black concrete block here, followed by a gray concrete, and then we want to go and then place down a gray banner. We're going to go ahead and create these two gray banners, they're going to be split in half with black on, um, we're going to have two different banners, black on basically opposite sides from each other. We're going to go ahead and place down the banner like this so the black is facing toward the front. And then the other banner on the other side like that so we have that black line facing toward the front. After we have that done, uh, we want to go and then go back from that gray concrete. One, two, three, four, and five blocks. And we're going to go and then place down a gray stainless pane. And then a polished black stone button on both sides. Continuing on, we're going to place down a narrow brick wall which will be on top of this black stainless or that black concrete block there as well as a narrow black concrete block here and the same thing again for our banners so our banners like this on the sides there with the black side facing toward the front we then want to place down one two three four five gray concrete blocks a polished black stone button and same thing over here like that on both sides continuing up we're to place down a black concrete block here black stainless pane and then one two three four five um gray concrete blocks back actually sorry it's gonna be a total of six back and again our polished black stone button here on both sides continuing up we're gonna place down a uh, black concrete block on top of this one here then one two three four and five gray concrete blocks back actually sorry it's only gonna be four this time and we're gonna have a polished black stone wall on the end there next row going up uh it's gonna be another brick wall here followed by a row of one, two, three, and four gray concrete, and again our polished black stone buttons going up here on the end here. So these end blocks like so. Uh, and also a light gray, or sorry, just a gray stained glass pane there on the back. Continuing on, we're going to place down a black stained glass pane on top of this wall here. Then we're going to go back uh, one, two, three, and four of these uh, these blocks, and then we're going to then place down a polished black stone on both sides of this rear one. And we also want to go ahead and grab this banner. Again, we're going to place down this banner here on the side of this light gray stainless pane. So, like this, with the black facing toward the front. And then after that, uh, go ahead and continue up. We're going to place down a gray concrete block on top of this one. Then one, two, three back. So you have a total of four there. Like that. And there's also going to be a gray stainless pane here on the back. Like so. We then also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a black banner. And we're going to place it on a black banner coming off this gray concrete block like that for the front there. With that done, on top here, we're going to go and grab a polished black stone stair. And we're going to place it on a polished black stone stair on top. Two gray concrete blocks back, an air polished black stone stair, and two polished black stone slabs on top, just like that. And with that all complete there, um, that will pretty much wrap up our tail section. And at this point, uh, you will also be able to do the numbering on the side of the aircraft. So, as I mentioned before, um, you can, the numbering is kind of up to you guys in terms of what you really want to do. Um, you can do whatever numbers you guys want, it really doesn't matter too much. Um, but basically, the way we position this is our first number um, is going to be a black banner with white lettering. So it's going to be like this on this black concrete block. We're going to go ahead and then do our second number, our third, and our fourth are just going to go across this section like so. And you can see our last two digits here match up with the two digits we have on the front there nose of the aircraft. So again, that'll be something up to you guys to figure out what you want to do exactly for yourselves and um, solve it uh, or do whatever you want. Then we're going to go ahead and do the same thing over here. So uh, this side, uh, you will need to make some other banners. So for example here on this side, uh, the 9 will not be in the black, it'll be gray. So we have the gray 9, the 1, 6, and this time we're going to have the black banner be the 4. 
so it kind of lines up with that black section there on the vertical stabilizer so um, that's just basically what I went ahead and did there for both sides I think the works pretty nicely and fits in really good there on the back and you have the tail number there for the aircraft nice and big um, so that's basically what we went ahead and did right there anyways at this point we're gonna go now move into basically doing the cabling and um, I'll go ahead and grab the necessary materials to go ahead and do that all right guys so moving into our cabling you can see I went ahead and already set the outline here for the line um, which will be going ahead and we're gonna be replacing these blocks with barrier blocks so the first thing is we have these two barrier blocks here we then want to go and go up two, going back like this and then after that we're going to then go to the middle here and place down two um, barrier blocks like so we're going to go and then go up again place down a row of four of barrier blocks back up again another row of four that's going to go back like so up again another row of four so just like this and we're going to then place down another row of four going up again followed by another row of four and we're just going to keep on working our way back so just like this and a, another row of four and then our last row up here is going to be a row of three which will connect up to this black stained glass pane basically now once we get to this point here we have our barrier blocks set up and we're going to go ahead and basically start adding our buttons here we're going to place down two buttons here on the sides of these two blocks here and then we're going to go ahead and then place down two buttons on top there so just like that um, we can also place down a button here on the sides here as well just to kind of help make that connection a little bit more smoother but basically like that we then want to go ahead and go up and we're going to choose a side so it doesn't really matter what side you put these buttons on but just choose one side we're going to choose the left side we're going to place down two buttons on the side and then two buttons on top two buttons on the side two buttons on top two on the side two 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 on top two on the side and one on top so you can see there we have only the buttons on one side there for the cable and you keep that cable in thin or relatively thin and that's going to go all the way up there um, for that air for the aircraft and basically create that um a cable system um, and you can see here it does split off on this on the bottom here um, and out to the sides as it does um, on the real aircraft and all that stuff and the last thing we want to do here is we're going to go to this barrier block here and we're just going to go ahead and build up one two three more to connect up to the top there and we're just going to place down uh, stone buttons here on the sides like that to go ahead and make those uh, connections like that um, going forward and with that all complete there that is going to basically wrap up the aircraft just trying to make sure I'm not missing anything and everything does appear to be good to go so that right there will complete the um, pretty much the in-flight version for the aircraft and uh, with this we're being now moving into our next section which will be the landed version so um, with that if you are just building the in-flight version hope you did enjoy the build and um, all that stuff do make sure you give me proper credit for the build and all that fun stuff. But uh, for those of you that are wanting to build the landed version, we're going to be going ahead and moving into the modification to go ahead and add the landing gear onto this aircraft. So with that, let's move into the landing gear. Alright guys, so going ahead and moving into our landing gear, we're going to be going ahead and starting with our front wheel here. For this, we're going to be going ahead and going down to this section here, so it's going to be this fourth gray concrete block back. We're going to go ahead and break, and we're going to then break the remaining one, two, and three blocks directly after that. So you have that row four cut in the middle here. We're going to place down a quartz upside down stair in this section here, followed by one, two, three, and four smooth quartz top slabs. We're going to place down a birchwood fence post that comes down like so, followed by a birchwood fence gate coming off this fence post toward the front and opened up toward it. We're going to go and then drop down from this fence post with an end rod, and on the bottom of the end rod we're going to place down a block of coal. We're going to place down a lever over here to the right side of the block of coal, as well as a skeleton skull coming off the right side there of the end rod. On the left side here we're going to place down an item frame, and in that item frame, we're going to go ahead and place down a light gray stained glass pane. And again, if you're on uh, Java, we can go ahead and place down a stone button in the same block space as the item frame. So we're just going to place it down um, like so to add a little bit of extra detail to our wheel. After that is all complete, we're going to go ahead and grab some polished black stone slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three, and four top slabs there to the sides of that uh, wheel well. So just like that on both sides there to go ahead and make our front wheel. Once we have that done, that's it for our front. Let's move on to our back. All right, guys, so moving into our back wheels. Our back wheels are also really simple to do. Um, all we're going to be doing is going to this section here. We're going to go and delete these two gray stained glass panes um, on both sides. We're going to leave that first one, though. We're going to place down one, two, and three polished black stone stairs. One, two, and three. And underneath those stairs, we're going to place down a row of three of upside down stairs. Same thing there on both sides. At this point here, we're going to go and then break these three gray concrete blocks. And we're going to place down two quartz top slabs as well as two blocks of netherite that go down like so. We then want to go ahead and skip a space, place down a diorite wall, and then in the space between the block of uh, 
netherite, and the wall we're going to place down an anvil like so. On the bottom of this wall, we're going to place down a smooth quartz top slab, as well as a polished blackstone upside down stair to both sides. A stair come on, or stair on top of those stairs, and then two stairs on the back of them, like so. We then want to go ahead and grab ourselves a skeleton skull, and we're going to place down a skeleton skull coming off this slab like that toward the back there. At this point, uh, we then want to go ahead and grab some materials for some banners. We're going to go ahead and make these banner wheels a little bit, uh, or these wheels a little bit nicer using some banners. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the materials, and I'll see you guys here in a sec to make those banners. All right, guys. So to go ahead and make these uh, banner wheels, they're super simple to make. We're going to need our loom, two black banners, two light gray dye, and four black dye. We're going to place down our loom, go into our, put our black banners into our loom and our light gray dye. We're going to do a line on the left side, like this, and the line on the right side with our light gray dye. Both these banners are going to go back into our loom. We're going to take our black dye, do the line across the top, line across the bottom to go ahead and create this wheel, and same thing here. Line across the bottom and line across the top to go ahead and create this wheel as well. We're going to take these banners, put them on the sides here of these um, stairs like so, and basically the same thing will be done over here once you put that landing gear over there on that side as well. Uh, but yeah, that right there just kind of sprucings up the wheels a little bit, makes them look a little bit more uh, wheel-like, I like to think. It just kind of gives that extra little detail to them and all that stuff so anyways that right there though is going to basically include what we have there for uh the landing gear and with that that is going to wrap up all my parts here for the tutorial for the uh p2j um made by kawasaki pretty much a nice um J japanese cold war maritime patrol aircraft hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use if you do want to use this build ideas so you guys can be proper credit for it this be thing from a side of the build link to my channel or if you do with this other pretty social media sites as long as you guys can be proper credit for your freezer for projects you guys are working on overall enjoy the build have fun with it and all that fun stuff with that though thank you guys again so much for watching as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe this is gear 204 and i'll see you guys next time